Well, welcome to Future Life Television, and today we're on the subject of politics. Many of you will know uh, Natasha Engel. She was the MP for North East Derbyshire. She was also Deputy Speaker of the House of Commons. Natasha, you're very welcome. Hi, Jill. It's lovely to see you again. Thank you very much indeed. Natasha, how do you view UK politics at the moment? Um, I think turbulent is probably the, the best word to describe it. Um, I think one of the, the biggest things that's facing us at the moment is obviously coming out of the pandemic um, and coming out of the pandemic. I think the problem is going to be as much about looking at the health consequences as the economic consequences. And I think that's really where the, the big turbulence is going to be. If we, we look at sort of the UK as, as the electorate and they look at the current political system, what kinds of changes could actually be made that the electorate would see and benefit from, from a political point of view? Um, I think it's an interesting question. And I think, um, I think it's quite popular to say that, the, that there's something wrong with the system. Um, I don't think there is something wrong with the system. I think we've got a very good political system. It's quite robust. Um, it may not give us everything that we want, uh, but it, it allows us to, to do what we really want to do. So we get the leaders and the parties that we vote for. And if we don't like them, we're perfectly, um, you know, it, it's perfectly possible for us to stand for Parliament ourselves and improve what happens. That's not true in every country. Um, and I think actually we need to sort of look more at what is good about the system rather than sort of throw the baby out with the bathwater and just say because we don't like what's happening at the moment that there's something there must be something wrong with the system I don't think there is and I know boundaries are, are looking to be changed aren't they and, and maybe um, what would that do as far as politics or representation in the House of Commons if boundaries were changed in line with with what is being proposed well, I think that there probably there probably won't be changing the boundaries at the moment. I think there's so much going on. Um, you know, I mean, the, the pandemic is going to have such huge consequences as we've discussed. I think boundary changes are going to be something that's going to be a bit on the back burner. The problem is with boundaries is that constituencies get big and they get small depending on whether you've got a, you know, in the cities, for example, where you've got lots of young people, the constituencies get bigger and bigger. And places like North East Derbyshire, where you tend to have a quite old population, and they get smaller and smaller so you do have to change the boundaries the proposals for the boundary changes though were to equalize constituencies so that every single constituency had the same number of people in it roughly um, and of course you know that doesn't actually take account of levels of deprivation uh, you know how good the transport links are that kind of thing it is enormously complicated and I think for that reason it's probably something that's going to be sort of put on the back burner. They were, I, talking, I, about, they were talking about reducing the number of constituencies and I think that that's something that is so controversial at the moment that, and that I, really I won't do, happen. And I do remember one comment you made to me that as an MP in North East Derbyshire your actual workload would be higher than maybe somebody who lived in a more affluent area where they could enjoy or in, engage with a solicitor or an accountant and and you really were that to an awful lot of people when you were an MP. Yeah and that's always been the case um, I mean it's it's it used to be completely divided down the lines of Labour and Conservative it's not so much anymore obviously um, but you do tend to get in those constituencies that are very deprived obviously people have got greater need of their of their MPs than in constituencies where you've got more affluent people. That's definitely true. So it's a different caseload. It, you, you tend to do an awful lot of casework when you have a deprived constituency. Now you're a poacher come gamekeeper now. And if I was going to ask you on behalf of the UK electorate for just one thing to ask of politicians to make the United Kingdom a better place for all of us, what would it be and why? Now, I have thought about this question quite carefully because, you know, we, it's something that we've discussed before, Jill. Um, and for me, I think I think it's a really difficult question because 
what is making the UK a better place for one person might actually be living hell for their neighbour. And I was just thinking about the sort of the Brexit question. Uh, for a lot of people, um, you know, getting the UK to rejoin the EU is what would make the UK a better place. But if you voted Brexit, not so much. So I actually think that, you know, if you are going to make demands or you're going to ask your politicians to, you know, change the way they do things or do something differently, I would say give the electorate as much choice as possible, because I think the choices are narrowing down at the moment, and I don't think that's very good for democracy. So I'm kind of slightly turning it on its head. I don't think there is one single thing, because I don't think there's one single thing that would satisfy everybody in the UK. And in fact, that's probably, you know, if, if we did have one single thing that would satisfy everybody in the UK, we'd probably be living in a dictatorship. Natasha Engel, thank you ever so much for your time today. Thank you, Jill.